Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Ed, Nathan, how's it going? It's good. It's good. Good. It's good. I don't know if people can already tell, but we're at a different time than we normally are in recording. They don't. How would they, they tell? They can't know. This, How would they tell? This is the morning version. They won't know that. <laughs> Why they, is that? They in now inter- know because I told them. Yeah, but and What's the viewership matter? went off immediately because they said, "What is this it's about?" The morning, the nonsense. It's, the, it's the morning show. <laughs> well, we would be the worst morning show. <laughs> And evening and afternoon. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, Podcast for people who are bored. For those who are also watching, you probably noticed that uh, Ed and Nathan, you guys have something special that I brought for you today. They yes, didn't notice have. the time, but they noticed this. They noticed this. <laughs> uh, so last week... I've got dirty water. Last week, you commented on my sparkling dirty water. Yeah. Well, this week, I brought you, you a brought sample. Me some. I made you some sparkling dirty water. I don't know if y'all can see that. It smells it? sweet. Oh, you already... Sh- try I it. I want, you to, time to go. I want you to try it, and I want you to tell Just me what Just so you y'all know, in the waiting for us to get ready to go, I have tried to drink this three times. And, and I had to stop <laughs> Jason it. Has tried. I want their reaction. All right. So go for it. What do you think about this South American... Oh, that's very good. What is it? Wow. Water? Is this the pear one? <laughs> yeah. So I found the, uh, the, the packet, mm. and I brought it with me for those watching. It's called... Livion. Livion. Mm. Livion. And I, and I looked into I don't know what it. country this is, but these people are not immigrating. Well, that water is delicious in the country. <laughs> yes. I, I, can't, I can't read anything on the label, except I did find a reference to the country of Chile. Ah. So and maybe it's from Chile. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I just love the way you say it. That's, That's how you say it. Way to say I know it. it's the way you say it, but I'm from the South. I don't I'm say saying Chile. Chile. So I'm I saying call Chile. it Chile. <laughs> Chile. <laughs> Like that stuff that you eat on hot dogs. Exactly. But no, I think it's from Chile. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say it just because it makes Ed laugh. It does. I do believe it's Chile. <laughs> Not <laughs> Chile. Chile. You got to put the emphasis okay. on the right syllable. And y'all thought the viewership went down because I said morning show. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who is from Chile, send in and give us the correct yeah. pronunciation. You know, there used to be a lady. If you just Google it, we will ignore it. Mm-hmm. We had someone, a Chilean person, mm-hmm. who used to attend okay. our church. So you like it? I do like it. Yeah. I told you it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Is that full of calories or no calories? Oh no. It's it's like the back says four calories on it. And so oh, wow. no sugar. For the people that care about which cancer agent we're drinking, oh, what shit. what's in there? I just, I told you it's it's in Spanish, so I can't read it. Okay. That's the best kind of cancer you're causing yeah. agent. Spanish cancer. <laughs> there's there's some words that I could probably uh Guess work that. out. I see aspartamo. That's aspartame. I'm gonna say that's aspartame. That's aspartame. Uh I see. Or the better version, aspartame. Yes. Yeah. Acido citrico, citric acid. Citric acid. I'm okay. And that's that. Maldexatrina. Mm. That's that. <laughs> that's a that stuff. Mal, it's something dextrose. Dextrose, something, yeah. I think it's. There's, think a, it there's another dextrose thing on here. Which so, you know. More thing. riveting content. Caramel. There's. <laughs> Colorante, you know Caramello. when people say, "I would Caramello. listen to them read the phone book." <laughs> We're reading the back of. A no one has ever said stuff. that you about us. Just put this in the description and go. Imagine, here's the list of ingredients yeah. in Spanish. What does that? What, what is, is that? that? So okay, it's right. dirty water, but it's really good. Please, it's really good. Lord, tell me there's something else on this podcast this week <laughs> other than this. Yes, there is. Okay, Jason's got. Well, since you guys kept talking about it last week, I thought it well, was very I'm good. I'll say it's, I, I am a little shocked for. I, not that I remember the last podcast, but did we keep talking about it? Or we we, we just, mentioned it. We, okay, all right. we talked about it for quite some time in the intro, I don't, I don't just like we're doing right now. Okay, yeah. all right, fine. it is good. I'll say that it is surprisingly good for flavored water things. It's really good. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad. So you enjoy that. What, what is the price of this? I have no idea. Somebody gave it to me. Oh, okay. Well, that's the best. What is price. the ch- Chilean cur- currency? I don't want chili to go powder. There. Chili dollars. They spell everything in chili <laughs> powder. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay, on to the podcast proper. Okay, <laughs> that okay. was the the minor part of it. All so right. uh, today we have two things to get done. Uh, we got one question. Who know? And we got an interview. Yeah. We're going to do the question first, and then we're going to do the interview. That sounds good. That's the way that, that works. Y'all up for this? For All right. So I think first, we should do the interview first and see if they come back for the questions. Mm, no. <laughs> I'm in charge. We're doing the <laughs> okay, question first. All right. Go ahead. I did get a, a flood of questions this week. I got a, like, flood. <laughs> a flood equals five. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. So I'm going to get one this week and maybe hopefully two next week and two the following week. All right. Week. There sounds you go. Good. Sounds right. like it. First question from a listener. Is there any validity to the extra books or added additions to the existing books that we find in the Catholic Bible? And their second question, follow-up to that, any chance a version of purgatory exists? 
So, you want to tackle the first one? I think so. Yeah. Extra books that, that are in the Catholic Bible that aren't in our Bible. If by they mean validity, do they mean they are actual historical books written during that time period? Yes. Yes. They that, are. That's, yeah. They are valid. Mm-hmm. And for lots of readers, uh, they, were, they were always considered a part of their mm-hmm. canon, some Jewish uh, sects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, Particularly I, the what, intertestament ones, the one between yeah, the, the testaments. one between like yeah. Maccabees mm-hmm. and all of those. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of them. Um, I do know that they provide lots of good historical context sure. to that's some right. of the things that are, are going on. So in that regard, I would say, yeah, they're, they're very useful. Uh, yeah. But I believe when the canon, we call the canon, it's the, the scriptures that we have compiled in our Bible uh, were compiled, I, I think, as far as doctrine and Mm -hmm. what things that uh, pertain to what we believe about Jesus and what we uh, know from history, I don't think they considered those as reliable in that regard. I think that's right. Correct in saying that that way? Yeah. No, I'm I'm good with all that. I think there's probably... Uh, the 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 thing I always lean on as far as because I'm guessing what the question is trying to get at is why don't we do those? I mean, mm-hmm. isn't, isn't that what you ask? Probably assume, that's right? what I would think. Why don't we? If there is validity, why yeah. isn't those in mm-hmm. our Bible? I think um, I tend to lean on at least in all that of the what's often referred to as the sufficiency of Scripture. In that, what we have in the 66 books of Nearly any Bible you're going to go pick up at a bookstore, mm-hmm. I would say, I got to think, 95%. If you go to Barnes & Noble and there's a there's a Bible there's there, there will be Catholic Bibles there. But mm-hmm. the vast majority you can pick up are going to be these 66 books that um, are kind of in the Protestant, at least, Bible, um, that they are sufficient. And what that means is that it... it it gives us what we need to know to be disciples of Jesus, yes. to to follow Jesus, to know him, to experience him. Are there benefits to the extra knowledge you might get out of the Catholic Bible and the the extra books that are in there? I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there is, and there could be benefit to it, mm-hmm. validity in the sense that they might have good historical mm-hmm. knowledge. If the question is trying to get at... Um, is it wrong for me to read them? If that's what you mean, ability, I wouldn't yeah. say it's wrong for no. you to read them. But as we say around here, even among the 66 books of the Bible that I read daily, that we read daily, uh, not all of that is weighted the same. I the, Most of the emphasis uh, that we put on is the stories of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, because all of the Bible is leading towards Jesus. So, even in all of that, that's at least where I land on mm-hmm. with validity. Yep. I personally have actually not read. I've read sections, um, but I've never I've never sat down and read any of what are often uh, referred to as apocryphal. Outside of a, cl- a class requirement, yes. I have never read any either. Yeah. I had a long time ago. I read some for a class requirement, I did but as I well. have I have not read any of. So then that leads to the the second part of the question. Uh, they're asking, you know, is is purgatory a thing? Could that could that possibly exist? And I and I assumed because it was a back to back question, kind of put in the same. Uh, they sent it in the same time. Uh, this person is kind of assuming that that's where that doctrine comes from. Um, I actually did a little looking into that. If, if you're not good. familiar with... I was going to wonder that, too. Okay, good. So if you're wondering what purgatory means, most people, what they mean when they use the term purgatory is that there's this intermediate place that you go after you die uh, where if you have some sins on your account that need to be dealt with, you go to this place, you kind of purge those sins, and then you go into you know what traditionally people have called heaven. Mm-hmm. Right. The, the final place where you're going, or at least for that time, um, that's what most people mean. So a lot of people want to know: Is that it? You know, if I if I still got some work to be done after I die to get into heaven, and many Catholics, of course, um, believe that. So I looked and and uh, did some research on where does that doctrine of purgatory come from, and I was assuming it was all going to be found in those intermediate books. I only found one passage that 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 at least the article I read cited that it comes from, and it's a very obscure little passage in Second Maccabees that talks about Judas Maccabees, the guy that's based on... Um, the hammer. Yeah. And he, uh, he does this... There's this moment where he, um, he prays for some dead people mm-hmm. and asks God to be merciful to them or something like that, and so that's where that comes from. The rest come from our scriptures, mm. and I went and looked up some of those, and honestly, I... For me, the ones that I read, 
you really had a you got to bring that to the text. Sure. Like for instance, one of them was the the moment where Jesus says to the thief on the cross, "Today you'll be with me in paradise." Well, if if you brought that assumption to you, that text, you could think paradise was purgatory. Purgatory, but that's that's only implied, I think. Right. And mm-hmm. there's another passage. Oh, of course, the they use the passage where Jesus tells a story about the rich man and Lazarus, uh-huh. and how there was this state where he was talking to you know Abraham over on the other side. But but in my again, when I re- read it. Uh, it's pretty clear that that story says, well, there's no passing back and forth over right. these two places. So, and again, it's, it's a parable. It's right. not a, right. it's not meant to give us blow by blow factual account. So again, I, I think you have to bring that to the text in order to get it. So, um, it would be interesting. I don't know the answer to this. Did your research say when this all started? When did purgatory start? I don't, no, didn't I'm, go not that saying, far. I'm not didn't saying go that you far. did extensive research. I did not. I don't know the history of that. Me either. And I know some of those things were just started by Pope edicts, you know, where they would yes, decide things back. You know, I don't even know how long that's been around. Well, and most people I've ever talked to about it, I, I say, well, you know, where do you get that? And because it, it, it's usually Catholics that I talk to, and they say, well, this is what my church teaches me. Right. And um, I know that they place a lot of weight on the tradition. position and sure. the traditions of the church and passed down and all that, which, you know, we can debate that at another time. But for me, um, when I approach the scriptures, I, I don't see that doctrine being taught very plainly. And so I don't see it as something that I would take any kind of hard stance on. The questioner says, is there a chance that it could exist? Okay, well, if you want to say anything could be possible. Yeah, those are my favorite questions because the answer is yes, <laughs> okay. there is a yeah. chance unless yes. it specifically says no and it doesn't say specifically no. But even yeah. if that were true, Jesus didn't see fit to warn us about it no. or to give us anything about it. The, the disciples afterwards didn't give us any kind of direct teaching on it. So I think it's not something that we need to major in. Well, and I do think when when you go back to, you put the sufficiency of scripture is to make me a disciple of Jesus, that everything, even Paul says that, that, you know, all scripture is God breathed. And we often say inspired by God, uh, but it is for correction and Mm -hmm. teaching and uh, exhortation or encouragement that's supposed to be there to, to once again, help me to be a disciple of Jesus. And I had a conversation at one point with somebody and they said, don't you think we need to talk a lot about the afterlife and things (laughs) like this to, in order to get people ready? And what I said is, I think the best way we can prepare people for their afterlife is to make them disciples here and now. That if I can help a person be a disciple here and now, that takes care of itself because Jesus has already taken, he says, anyone who is my disciple is going to be, I'm going, I'm preparing a place for you that it's going to, that gets taken care of that. I don't have to use fear of purgatory or fear of even hell Mm -hmm. to get someone to want Jesus. There is a difference between being scared of a bad afterlife and loving Jesus. And they're two, they are, they can be two different things. And I think at the end of the day, for me, um, the reason that I, I personally have reject that teaching, I just don't, I don't put any stock into it is because I, I think the way that it is usually applied takes away from the sufficiency of Jesus sure. as our Savior. And um, if, if what Jesus did on the cross is sufficient to save us, <laughs> then I think adding this takes away from that. And that is yeah. what the book of Hebrews, I mean, it's, almost explicitly it does. says. And so that, if that, to sort of make a final word on that, that's what I would say about that. I think, I think that now, of course, people who do uh, buy into this probably don't see it quite that way as I do. They sure. would not see themselves as taking away from the sufficiency of Christ. I do. And so, yeah, I, I I'm, I'm guessing the only reason a person who is alive is concerned about purgatory is they're concerned about someone who's already passed. I think so. Probably. And there, is there anything, and I, again, I'm speaking out of more of this much knowledge about purgatory mm-hmm. that there may be something I could do to help the person move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that was one of the breaks between Martin Luther and the yeah. Catholic Church, indulgences and mm-hmm. the idea of things I could do on earth to help get people out of purgatory. But, you know, for me personally, I'm not sure why the idea of purgatory has any weight for me if it's not for the sake of someone who's already died. If it's just for me, if I follow Jesus, that's all I really need to know. Sure. Yep. What, what happens to me in the afterlife, what it looks like, what the environment is, where I'm at, 
there's enough uh, clear teaching in the Bible that when I pass from this life, wherever it'll be, I'll be with the Lord. Yes. yes. Wherever, wherever that is, I don't know whether that's mm-hmm. the, I don't think it's the final thing most people think of as heaven because in the book of Revelation, that's going to come at the end of time when it comes, the city comes mm-hmm. down and the new heavens and the new earth. Yeah. If that's even the way that is, or that's a description, I, I can't tell you for sure. I know that. I'm not, I don't have to know that yeah. in my opinion, but I do know that I'll be with the Lord. And that's the same thing he told the thief. You're going to be exactly. with me. And You're going to be yes. with me. And that should be where we place our hope and trust. Which my, so then my whole point of my life is to learn to be with Jesus. Mm. How can I learn yes. to and be to with Jesus? With and, yes. and love being with Jesus so that I am prepared to be with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well I said. Had a, I had a funny, uh, this is a funny, if we're done with that question, just a All right. quick, on, the, on uh, that, I was talking with someone recently who said they grew up in a very, I was scared of hell more than mm-hmm. I was, my parents tried to scare me. And they, the phrase they would often say is when they did something bad, they told a lie, they mm-hmm. broke a rule, they'd say, well, I guess you're going to be roasting marshmallows with Satan in hell. <laughs> and I said, that's a really high view of hell, yeah. that everyone gets a marshmallow. Yeah. Like Satan's walking around going like, mm-hmm. did you get your marshmallow? I want to make sure you get your marshmallow coming to hell. <laughs> it's a really good place to get a marshmallow. Well, and so. Dante's version of it, you would be the marshmallow. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah depending on... <laughs> Everybody gets some of me, I guess. Uh, I'm the marshmallow that Satan is roasting. So we had a we had a good fun time with that of roasting, roasting marshmallows. Satan wow. is a very good host, making sure everyone gets their you marshmallow. Know, that conversation about fear of hell and the decision, I want to escape hell, I just also have had that discussion recently. It's interesting. I hadn't had that discussion for years because we don't talk... We just don't teach that around here about you decide to follow Jesus to escape hell. That's Mm -hmm. just not the way we talk about it. And uh, it hasn't served this person who's my age very well Mm. at all. They don't have, they don't have a love Mm -hmm. relationship with Jesus because Jesus really wasn't somebody to be loved. He was more like, you know, he also was the judge. Ultimately, Jesus was the one that I was disappointing that was going to send me to hell. So you got to get the right loophole. Right, it makes Christianity something I run away from rather than toward. Yeah, right. And who wants to do that? Yeah. So, all right, Uh, Nathan. Yes. Why don't you uh, tell us what's up next, what interview we've got today? Sure. A uh, good friend of mine, good friend of our church, uh, Derek Teagle, uh, is the director, the founder of an organization here in Coweta County called Empowered for Life. They're a mentoring organization. Uh, Derek's going to tell a lot more about that in the interview, uh, but we've we've actually been partnering with them for the last year or so and trying to uh, just see what we can do to support what they're doing. And so I wanted to sit down with Derek because we had just recently taken, uh, at the time that we had filmed this, we had just recently taken a trip uh, with some people from Community Christian, some people from Empowered for Life, uh, for us to go together to a civil rights museum called the Legacy Museum in Montgomery, Alabama. We talk a little bit about that. We also talk about what Derek is doing uh, and their organization is doing and how we can be involved with that. I think it's a really good interview. And of course, it's me, so it meanders and goes to all different kinds of places. But I think you'll enjoy it a lot. That'll be fun. I hope so. <laughs> all right. So let's get right to it. Here's the interview now. See you guys next week. Bye. All right. Well, I am here right now with a good friend of mine and uh, the founder and director of Empowered for Life here in Coweta County, Mr. Derek Teagle. Derek, why don't you say hello to everybody? Hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah, we are glad to have you back here uh, on our podcast here to Mm -hmm. do an interview a little bit just to talk about what's going on. Our our church and uh, Empowered for Life uh, have a partnership. We've been working together for a little while now, and we've had volunteers go down to help you guys. And also, we just recently uh, did a trip together where, uh, yeah, where we took uh, some people from Community Christian, some people from Empowered for Life, and went on a trip that I want to talk about in just a minute. But first, for people who don't know, Derek, why don't you tell a little bit about who Empowered for Life is and what it is you guys are trying to do, the difference you make in our community. Basically, we're an organization that foundation is mentorship. Um, God gave us this vision almost 14 years ago, be 14 years, actually in three days, um, to, uh, to do this where we mentor kids. And once we find out what their gifts are, we find ways to maximize their gifts. Uh, we've been doing it for 14 years now. Right now we have a total of 
uh, 267 kids involved in Impactful Life. Um, we've picked up 64 since the beginning of this year. So it's been a crazy good year of adding kids. But the main thing is to keep kids active. Um, we have a daily group me talk where we talk daily about what's going on in life in this world. Uh, we do four seminars per year with the students and the parents just to educate them. Um, I mean, we do a thing called college tours where about 20 times a year we take kids to different colleges just to get the ins and out of the next level of going to college. Um, so those are, quote unquote, in a nutshell, what we do. Uh, the main thing is keep the kids active. Like we're all trying to find a volunteer opportunities to keep the kids moving, but also for them to understand the idea of giving back. Because we are truly a blessed organization that's been involved for 14 years, which is crazy for a nonprofit to be involved for 14 years. Um, but our main thing is educating. Also, our main thing is giving back to others. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. And uh, Derek, I know you guys uh, have been working with students in here uh, in Coweta County. You guys work uh, with a lot of athletes as well. Is mm -hmm. that right? Correct. Um, uh, out of 267 kids, uh, 132 are athletes. About half of them are athletes. Um, and we've been doing helping the athletes find athletic scholarships and academic scholarships for 13 years. And out of the 13 years, we have assisted in 351 of them going to college on scholarships. Uh, and last year, we had 51 kids that went to college on scholarships. So it's been a, been a really, really good thing, uh, per se, where we mentor the kids in the process. We mentor the, 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 the parents in this whole process. Um, but most important than anything, football or sports gives us an avenue to reach the kids. And once we reach them, it's our opportunity to use that platform to teach the kids about life. So we've got to find a way to reach them. And once we reach them, we teach them. It's what we look at. So for those of you uh, here at Community Christian to kind of get you just a, a good vision of, of, of what uh, Derek is talking about, this is the kind of stuff we talk about all the time around here, which is one-on-one -on -one acts of love and compassion that individual people take the little bit of time or money, or effort, or relationships that they have, and you invest in the life of somebody else. And Empowered for Life is doing that with these students of being able to just take mentors, uh, take opportunities, uh -huh. and to, to put those in front of students for them to be able uh, just to to see a potential in themselves and the potential they have to make a difference in the world. And it's just incredible uh, to us here at Community Christian to get to be a part of that. We're going to talk a little bit later about how you can get more involved as a member of Community Christian with what Empowered for Life is doing. But I want to talk about something we've already done together, which is uh, this past Saturday, which when we're filming uh, was July 31st. Um, here at Community Christian, we uh, announced originally we were going to do this on June 19th, but it right. rained so much uh, that we decided not to go on the 19th. We actually went when it was hotter outside uh, hmm. on July 31st to uh, Montgomery, Alabama. There's a uh, museum and a memorial. The memorial is called the National Memorial for Peace and Justice. Uh, mm -hmm. And there is a museum uh, created by called the Legacy Museum, which is created by the Equal Justice Initiative for people who have seen the movie starring Michael B. Jordan, uh, Just Mercy. Mm -hmm. Its uh, Equal Justice Initiative was created by the real life person from that movie, Brian Stevenson, and they're making a difference um, in our world about issues around mass incarceration and all different kinds of stuff. But the Legacy Museum kind of traces the history of uh, slavery all the way to kind of currently with mass incarceration and talks about issues of uh, equal justice and equity. And so we took a, a group from Community Christian. Uh, Derek had a group from Empowered for Life, and we went together to learn together and really to build relationships together. So uh, I kind of talked about a little bit about what we did, but Derek, you want to talk a little bit about kind of what the heart was behind this of, 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 of why we really wanted to get our organizations together? I think more than anything that we understand that there's a need. Uh, we need to talk. Uh, we need to have conversations. And I think once we really get talking to each other, that we understand that we, we are very similar in a lot of ways. But also, I think it's, it's needed that we go back and really understand our history. 
all of our history, um, not just a black history, but all of history. And I think this was an opportunity for us, including myself, um, to really learn a lot more about lynching. Um, and even our area of Caddy County, um, but also learn about just the history uh, of the slave trade. You know, so uh, I had so many kids, uh, two of them told me before we left that the trip was on the scale of one to 10 was a perfect 10. So just to hear that uh, made everything worthwhile, even though it was hotter than expected. But one thing I shared with the kids is that when they did the boys boycott, it was hot, it was cold, it was raining, it was snowing, like all these things was happening. And they still did it, you know, so sometimes we need that humble thoughts like, OK, it's hot today. Yes, it was hot, but um, they did it for almost a year, 11 months with the boys boycott, you know, so definitely something that I, I really enjoyed in those some of that history would make you sad, you know, get you very emotional. Uh, but it's still good to hear it. It's still good to see it. It's still good to feel it. And they did a great job at the Legacy Museum in Memorial of bringing that stuff to light. Yeah, I totally agree. This was actually my second trip. I had gone with my family mm-hmm. um, back in January, actually on Martin Luther King Day. We went, um, and it was much cooler uh, <laughs> than it was when we went because the memorial, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, is actually outside in a park there in uh, downtown Montgomery, and uh, it was it was hot uh, to say the least, but. As uh, Derek said, both times I went, very emotional experience. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't had a chance to go, you should definitely go. But what I'll say was different about the second time we went was that I went with a group of people that I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know everybody. My wife was in the group with me. Uh, But uh, I was able to have conversations with people who had different perspectives, uh, who had uh, came from a different cultural background, had different experiences with uh, racial justice or injustice. And to be able to have conversations and even the things that weren't said, but that you experienced just by being with one another, it changes the experience that this was more than education. It was a chance for uh, really us to come together and look at a problem. uh, That's a problem in our history, but it's still very much a problem in our world today. And for us to be able to look together and just agree, this is wrong. God wants to do something about it and we want to do something about it. And so all of that, I think, was just very powerful to get to do. We're hoping to get to do another trip uh, together in the future. Derek and I and a a team of people are going to be working together on another trip. So if you're watching this from Community Christian or if you're watching this from Empowered for Life, we hope that you guys will be joining us uh, on that trip because I just think the more people we can have go, the more of these kind of experiences we can have together and the more we can get to listen to one another. And I know that's a big key for you, Derek, and everything that you do. Why don't you talk about just the key of having people who are different than one another get together and just listen to one another? I think that's one of the the biggest things is intentionally meeting people, intentionally getting to know someone. And this is just a a great opportunity to not only take a road trip, which is always good, but to really get a chance to, man, I understand where you're coming from now. or I understand why she think that way. I think a lot of times we make assumptions of, well, they're doing this because, well, how do you know if you've never been in their shoes and you never listened to them and say how their situation is? So I think more than anything, they give us an opportunity to sit down and truly listen. And one thing we do know about when you truly listen, you find out a lot of things about people or a lot of things about yourself. You know, so um, I love that opportunity because it really gives us a chance to really think like, man, I see the way Nathan thinks now. I, I get it. I understand. Or I see the way Derek feel now because he shared it with me. If you're not sitting down and making time to listen to someone, all that stuff really, really won't come out. And this way is a chance for all of it to come out. Well, and I think I know for um, Empowered for Life, and you mentioned already your seminars that you do. But uh, one thing that I know we've had volunteers from Community Christian go be a part of is uh, your basketball um leagues that you have right. that go on for uh, uh, you know a month or so at a time where uh, you have uh, students from Empowered for Life that come down to play basketball, but they're playing with either mentors or just people from uh, the community that get to sit down and they get to, once again, know each other and listen to each other. And I know you've mentioned that a big key for it is you have um, 
at the basketball league, I know you have at least one or, or a couple police officers mm -hmm. who are there. They get to know the kids and uh, maybe a teenager who had assumptions about police officers. Well, now they know a police officer and maybe the police officer who had assumptions about the teenagers in the community. Now they know some of the teenagers in the community. Uh, why is that so critical to what you're doing at these basketball games and at all the different kind of seminars and stuff you have going on? Because I was that I was I was that kid on the other side that didn't trust the law enforcement officers uh, um, and thought they was they was dirty. So I, I came from a perspective that I was that kid, but I'm willing to listen. And that's something that I shared with uh, former chief uh, Buster Meadows about seven years ago that uh, at the end of the day, I told him, I don't really like you. I don't like officers in general. I said, but I'm willing to learn. And I told him what I wanted him to do is that every time in, in Powerful Life is doing any event or a seminar or a practice, have officers there, but we can learn each other. And over the last seven years, me and Buster Meadows, Chief Meadows, have one of the best relationships, period, where we still contact contact each other now. Like every week we contact each other because we have a relationship. Um, but it's built off one thing. He listening to me. I listen to him. I share some things that I thought. He shares some things that he think. And now we, we're growing. You know, so to me, the listening part and being intentional with it is very important. Like right now, I'm planning on meeting the new police chief just to have that same partnership to know that, man, I want to help you guys. I want you guys to help us out. And what will happen once you start trusting the next person, I'm willing to tell you what has happened in my neighborhood now because I trust you. They're going to make the neighborhood better. They're going to make police and law enforcement better. Like everybody wins that way once we trust each other. But when you don't trust each other, nobody wins because we're not telling anything. You got to figure out yourself and you don't want that. You want a crime to be solved, period. And in community involving in crimes helps out a lot when the community will tell you what's going on. And that's one, that's one of the barriers that has happened for years and years is that so many people will not tell or share certain things because they don't trust them. But once we trust someone, you will share like any relationship, where it's marriage, where it's friendship, where it's business relationship. If I trust my partner, I'm going to tell some stuff. And if I don't trust him, I'm keeping to myself. Well, and what you're, what you're saying right there, um, for listeners of our podcast should not sound foreign or should not sound strange. You should be a minning and just being uh, super jazzed about hearing that because we know uh, as followers of Jesus, that is central to what Jesus came to do that on the cross, God did not just reconcile us to God, but he made a way for the, all the walls, all the division between us and other people to be broken down, that when we come together for the sake of saying, hey, I love you, I care about you, I may not understand you, right. I may not. I may not come from where you come from. I may not think like you think, but because Jesus loves you, I love you, and I want to, I want to see how we can work together uh, through the problems in our world. This is a great opportunity for us to do that. And here's what I know. Most people listening, I got to say most, nine out of 10 at least, if not 10 out of 10 people listening go, yep, that's the solution. We got to listen to each other. We got to talk to one another, not at one another, all that kind of stuff. But here's the truth. Until you personally get out there and start having conversations with people and not at people and until you intentionally choose to get around somebody who's not just like you and that doesn't fit in the echo chamber of your demographic or your Facebook feed until you do that, you you're going to end up being part of the problem as well. And yes. so we, so we want to give opportunities here with our partnership through empowered for life and with really all of our partnerships in the community for us to just get to know other people and to be able to share the love of Jesus one life at a time through conversations, through listening, through action. And so I know Derek's got some stuff that uh, Empower for Life is doing that we can help with, we can be a part of, we can put into practice what we're talking about. As I said, we're going to have a trip that we want you guys to be a part of. Probably is going to be sometime around October, September, right. October, November. But Derek's got some very practical stuff coming up. So Derek, why don't you tell um, uh, people at Community Christian how they can get involved, even if it's just like a one-time thing or more regular than that. What kind of stuff do you have coming up? I'll, I'll go ahead and get you started with one I know. I know you've got a fundraiser. A, it's like it's a golf fundraiser coming up in September, correct? Correct. And basically what our golf fundraiser is, it's, it's in honor of my son, Cameron, who was a childhood cancer survivor. Um, so we raised funds for Empowered for Life 
as well as we raise funds for Children Healthcare of Atlanta to give back. Um, the funds on our end helps covers in powerful like activities throughout the year. So it's, it's so you take a big chunk of things that we do throughout the year and it covers it. Um, so and for Children Healthcare of Atlanta, it gives the opportunity to give back with kids with cancer. Uh, my son was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 12. So we know what that battle is. We know what that fight is. We know the hardship it's have on families. So it was our goal as a family to always give back to Children Healthcare of Atlanta. So this fundraiser gives us that opportunity not only to help out kids locally with Empire for Life, but also help out kids globally um, with Children Healthcare of Atlanta. You know, so giving them a check every year is something that's very rewarding for my family and for my organization because we went through that for a whole year of my son battling cancer, the radiation, the chemo, like you went through that, you know, the, the headaches, us going back and forth to the hospital. So we understand that battle. So it means a lot to our family. It means a lot for the organization that we give back, uh, but also it benefits our organization with, with funding. Uh, we need funding. And as I said earlier, our numbers has increased to 267. So we enjoy, have over 60 kids that's joined us this year. And we want, we want to keep them active. And to keep them active, it costs money. You know, so it, it definitely helps us out. Um, it helps, helps us out with our college tours for our transportation, where we take 20 trips per year, just take kids on colleges trips. Uh, it helps out with, with, with food on college tours. So it does a lot for us. Like, it really does. Um, and it's our major fundraiser uh, that we do. We're looking for golfers. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for anybody that just love kids. You know, so if you fit in one of those categories that you love kids or you golf, or you have a business, or you want to sponsor, that's what we're looking for. So how can people help? Uh, people may want to get involved with this uh, golf fundraiser. Like you said, they, they want to come volunteer. They want to sponsor something. They've got a business. Maybe they want to talk to, and I want to say this, some of you guys, you work at uh, corporations, you work at uh, businesses that they're looking for uh, places to sponsor. Uh, they, they want to uh, give back. You could mention this. How can they get involved with this golf fundraiser? So basically, uh, if you want to be a golfer, uh, individually, it's $100 for a golfer. If you have a team, which is a foursome, it's $350. Um, if you want to be a sponsor, a whole sponsorship start at $100. Our golf cart sponsor, which is our highest sponsorship level, is $2,000. Uh, we have many other opportunities in between. Uh, at the tournament, if you're a golfer, you receive a lunch, uh, which will be provided. Uh, by Outback Steakhouse, but also at the golf tournament, you have a chance to win a 2021 Toyota Camry, or you have a chance to win win a million dollars. So you have it's a it's a million dollar shot golf tournament as well. So you have an opportunity to win a 2021 Toyota Camry, or you have a chance to win a million dollars at the golf tournament as well. Wow. So there you go. You got all the incentive you need. This is on Saturday, September 11th. It's mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. and it is at I'm going to look it up right here. Arbor Springs. At the Arbor Springs Coweta Club. So uh, let's make sure that if you want to be a part of that, you can go there. Uh, I, I Right now, you should be able to see uh, Derek's phone number if you want to talk to Derek about it. Uh, Empower for Life's uh, website is also on the screen right now. So those are some ways you can get in contact with their organizations if you have more questions on that kind of stuff. Uh, but Derek, why don't you talk a little bit because you talked about um, – this this event not only is going to benefit Children's Health Care of Atlanta and, and raise funding for uh, Empowered for Life so you guys can do all the various great things you do with students. Um, but one thing I know you've got pro, you know, starting soon is you're going to have these college trips to kind of give kids a chance who may not before have thought college was an option for them. Right. But then they get to go actually see it. They get to be on a college campus. They get to see it and see people thriving and enjoying life. And they get a picture and they can, because they're physically there, they can picture themselves being there. So tell me a little bit about your college tours. How long have you guys been doing this? What's the purpose of it? All that kind of stuff. So basically we started in 2009 and we was doing a couple of trips per year. Um, now we, we've done since 2009, we did 107 tours. And basically, what a tour wow. is is an opportunity to get the kids on a college campus, um, talk to college administrators uh, to find out can they really go to this college. Uh, but also, if you're a student athlete, we get a chance to talk to college players and college coaches. Um, some of the trips are one day trip or same day trips. Some day, some of the trips are overnight trips. Um, some have been weekend trips. 
And we do it as a as a way, once again, for, for kids to have the mindset they want to go to the next level. We want them to see it, uh, really see what it's really about. So uh, the tours are especially designed for our students uh, where they really do meet administrators, they really do meet college coaches, and they really do hang out with college players. Um, and it, it works because now when it's time to make that quote-unquote decision, you will have two or three years of college tours that you really know what's going on when you get on a college campus. You know, so um, once again, we start September the 4th. Our first one is Georgia State University. Uh, and we have so many other opportunities. We're going to Delta State, which is a, a overnight trip in Mississippi. Uh, we got a trip going to Mercer. We got one to go to University of Alabama. You know, so just a lot of different trips that we got planned. And we've been everywhere. Like we've been to University of Tennessee. Uh, we've been to Florida State. We've been to Jacksonville University. We've been to UAB. We went to Troy University. So we went to a lot of places over the years. Uh, one year we did a three-day trip to Memphis. Not only we did a trip to the University of Memphis, but also we got a chance to visit Graceland, got a chance to visit the Civil Rights Museum, uh, the Bass Pro Shop. You know, so we, we try to keep the kids active and let them have fun while they're there. But also, we know, the purpose of them being there is really understands the in and out of going to college. So, Derek, I know you and I were talking before. Uh, there's a way that if if that's what you're really passionate about and maybe the the golf fundraiser, you're not a golfer and you can't even imagine yourself in that environment, but you do love the idea of helping kids understand the benefit of of college and that they can they can change their life by being involved in all that. Derek, you you had mentioned to me that that there's a way that uh, people at Community Christian you can give money just directly to to help with that. So so talk about what what that would look like. So basically, each tour we take twenty kids, and we we ask for a food sponsor. And basically, what a food sponsor is is to make sure the kid have a really good meal on a trip. So we ask for ten dollars per kid. So uh, a per kid sponsor or a tour sponsor, a uh, tour sponsor is two hundred bucks, and basically it covers a meal while we on the trip for the kid. Now, for the, the three-day trips, of course, it's more than that. Um, but the overnight trip or the same-day trip, uh, we ask for a food sponsor. And it's $200 per trip uh, is to feed, ten, uh, feed 20 kids what it is. And we use that as a way to make sure that it's not a kid on a trip feeling left out because he don't have money to, to buy his meal. So we make sure we get each kid $10 to spend when they go to a restaurant, where we're going to a Burger King or a Wendy's or a McDonald's or a Zatsby. You know he's going to have him a good meal. That's awesome. And see, that's a very simple thing that people can do and uh, just another way to get involved. One final thing, uh, have your basketball leagues already started back up? We start in, at the end of November. At the end of November. So if uh, tell a little bit about how this is this is a way that's not necessarily uh, getting involved with uh, financially giving, but if you want to give your time, you want to go volunteer starting in November, tell a little bit about what someone can do if they want to volunteer with Empowered for Life. So on that thing, what we do is we ask, we all ask for community coaches. And basically the only thing you're doing is hanging out with the kids, but talking to the kids and listening to the kids uh, as they kind of control their self on the courts. Uh, referees, uh, also people that are there to serve. And what it is, just an opportunity is to get to know the kids in a top level neighborhood, which is uh, definitely a, a poor neighborhood in Coyote County. Uh, most of the kids come from those neighborhoods. And a lot of these kids have never really got a chance to talk to someone that don't look, really look like them. Um, so it's a way that people can come and talk and listen to these kids and see the gifts that the kids have. One of the things I've, I've learned over the years with Empire for Life is that a lot of kids have gifts, but they're, they're untapped gifts. Um, where a kid might be so talented in in landscaping, or a kid might be so talented he might end up being a barber. So they have these gifts, but nobody really is talking to them about their gifts, or they really can't see those gifts. So to me, it's an opportunity for the community to get together with these kids and just talk to them, listen to them, find out what they're, they're talented at, find out what their needs are per se, and kind of go from there. Yeah, so that's an easy way. Once again, you want to get involved with that. Derek's phone number is on the screen. Empower for Life uh, website is on the screen right now. Uh, Derek, anything else you want to let people know about that you got coming up that uh, people should have on their radar? Uh, the main thing is, is the golf fundraiser because, like I said, it does so much for us. So where you want to be a volunteer, we, we're always willing to have volunteers because it's just a crazy day. Um, so what you want to volunteer, where you want to come hang out, or you want to come meet the students because a lot of students work the golf tournaments. So you get a chance to see what your financial givings are going to, uh, which is always great. 
or you want to be or you want to play uh you'd be definitely will welcome anybody that's interested in doing any of those things and also um our broadcast station uh we would be doing a live broadcast from the golf tournament. So you want to come and talk about what you're doing or about your business. It's a live broadcast all throughout the golf tournament that you can come talk about what you're doing and why you're supporting Empire for Life. So there you go. The uh, golf fundraiser is going to be on Saturday, September 11th at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, registration starts at 8 a.m. Correct. And it's at the uh, Arbor Springs Golf Club uh, right here in Coweta County. So uh, if you want to contact Derek, his number's on the screen. Uh, you can talk with him about what's going on, or you can just be there on Saturday, September 11th. Volunteer, golf, sponsor, do something. This is a great way for us to support a, a, a great organization here in Coweta County. Thanks, Derek, for uh, talking Thank with you. us today. Thank you.